And what do you want? I want to change. And what have you got? When you feel the same, even though I know I suppose I'll show all my cool and cold like a job. This group represents retired military, retired police officers, and an active duty police officer. They have served our communities and our country and are serving them with integrity and courage and we thank them for their service. So we want you to know you're not alone. We see what you see and we feel what you feel and boy do we get angry like you get angry when we see what's going on. Don't get me started on throwing a pastor in jail for preaching the word of God. It's wrong. It's a violation of our charter. Who's ready to unmask their kids? Our children have become the undeserving victims in this false narrative. It is our duty to stand up for their right to breathe. At Take Action Canada, we've started a class action against the school boards and the government of Ontario. They want to continue to muzzle our kids, keep them in constant fear, and jab them with a proven, unsafe, experimental injection for a virus that is not even a danger to their age group. According to the World Council for Health, masking children is causing inadequate oxygen levels and elevated carbon dioxide levels in their blood. Studies have confirmed that germs attach to the outside but also the inside of their masks. Inhaling these germs can cause viral, fungal and bacterial infections. According to Dr. Paul Alexander, there is a risk of potential future inflammatory fibrotic lung disease from wearing the blue masks that they provide in our schools. Good afternoon. My name is Suzanne, and I'm a provincial offenses prosecutor. Um, currently, kind of, sort of, working for a municipality in Ontario. Um, I did previously, a number of years ago, work as a prosecutor for the province of Ontario, although I do not represent them and I do not stand for them. Um, as many of you are in the same boat as me, I'm currently on unpaid leave and have been for the last 30 days and will be terminated at the end of next week if I don't comply. I can assure you I will be terminated, just like many of you. So this is all about us. We are all in the same boat. There's a matter currently in India where they've taken their medical officer of health who sits on the WHO to the International Criminal Court in Hague on charges of crimes against humanity and genocide. And I'm doing this not just for all of you, but I'm doing this because I have six grandchildren. And I will fight until my death to make sure that those children have a future. All children. I have been contacted by hundreds of people and I'm going to share a few stories with you that I'm just absolutely appalled at. I was contacted and spoken to by a nurse who is now terminated or soon will be. And she advised me that in the hospital she works at they average five to six stillbirths a year. And from January to June they had 86. That's an 800% increase. Another nurse I know communicated with me and told me that in, within a 48-hour period, they had nine stillbirths. All the mothers were... This isn't just about the children who stand before us. This is about all the children we will never get to see. 
because all children are going to be affected by this and we have to stand and protect them. We have to guard them. If that means pulling your kids out of school, then do so. There are a ton of teachers that are currently without work that need work. Hire them. There are nurses who do not have work. Hire them. You can't visit your elderly family in long-term care. Pull them out and hire a nurse to come to your home. Now you know that your family will be taken care of properly. There's work for everybody. We just have to find an underlying way to get it. And it's there. So just so that you know, I'm an associate professor of viral immunology at the University of Guelph. And... <laughs> Yeah, I can't say that I'm proud of my university at all anymore. I stand with uh, Michael Palmer on that. Now, I'm a vaccinologist. I, I traditionally love vaccines and develop vaccine technologies, but I do not. You have to understand that we have changed the definition of a vaccine during this pandemic to try and make these fit. Asking that's being done and the physical distancing isn't respected by a virus for which the pore sizes on the masks are vastly larger than the size of the virus on the respiratory droplets that you would be exhaling when you are healthy. Yes, if you're coughing and sneezing, sure, they'll do a little bit to catch those large droplets that can spread the virus. And that's the only time you're gonna be spreading the virus, but you're not supposed to be out when you're sick anyways. So to be outside, especially out in the nice air like this and wearing a mask, for what you remember, for the virus, for those of you wearing masks right now, for that virus, it's like standing in front of a wide open barn door and you're laughing wearing that mask saying, try and get out of here, virus. It's absolutely ludicrous. And that's what it is when you look at the size, okay, of the droplets. And worse, what I want to tell you as well, when it comes to naturally acquired immunity, the data is very clear. If you have naturally acquired immunity against SARS coronavirus 2, chances of you experiencing a severe side effect is increased relative to somebody who is naive, meaning they have no pre-existing immunity. There are multiple studies doing this now, showing this now. That's even why we see, for example, the myocarditis, there's a much higher incidence of the heart inflammation on the second dose compared to the first dose. Instead, we should be offering voluntary testing. We should be offering tests free of charge to people to see if they have immunity. And because if you have immunity, this is the thing. If you have immunity, that's the goal. You've, you've made it to the finish line, and there's going to be zero benefit to you and zero benefit to anybody around you. But if you do get that, you are at enhanced risk of the dangers from those. This is simple medicine. Never, ever have we ever promoted giving a, a medical procedure to an individual when there is zero benefit to them, zero benefit to everybody around them, and only potential harm. That alone is the reason why they make zero sense. We have uh, a local MPP who has actually stood on the right side of freedom. Belinda Carajalios and her husband Jim. They're together founders of New Blue Ontario. Thank you. In July of 2020, do you guys remember the Reopening Ontario Act? That's the bill that allows Doug Ford and the PC party to make all these laws, the vaccine mandates, the, vax, the, the mask mandates, but they can do it without any voting, without any debate, without any committee time. They just do it. That's not how a democracy works. At the time this bill was tabled by the Solicitor General, I was her parliamentary assistant, which is like a junior minister. I didn't get to see the bill until it was tabled. I read the bill and I said, this is not good. And I talked to Jim about it. And he said, this is not good. And I predicted that this overreach of power would be extended. And here we are today in October of 2021. The reopening on Trail Act is still happening. We are still seeing rules being implemented every week by this government without any debate, without any vote by your elected representatives. This morning I woke up with a full head of hair. I found out about half an hour before the rally that I would be emceeing. So this is what we're dealing with now. 
I want to wrap with a quote by Nelson Mandela, who said, For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others.